Working from home means every day is bring your kid to work day. And if you don't have the right tools and mindset to balance work and family responsibilities, you may end up throwing in the towel. Black Moth Radio gives you the upper hand in starting and managing your ideal lifestyle while creating your own business, doing what you do best, and doing it from home. So, grab the nearest ink pen and prepare to take notes, because this show is packed with discoveries, tips, and experiences to help you through your journey. Let's begin with our host, Robin Bull. Hey everyone, and welcome to Black Moth Radio, where we make working from home work for you. My name is Robin Bull, and I am your host, and... In case you can't tell, I am still sick. Um, been sick for about a week and a half now. It's in my lungs, but also apparently still in my sinuses as well, if you can't tell from the sound. But, as everyone knows who already works from home, there's no such thing as sick leave, there's no paid time off, you work or you don't get paid. So, the last couple weeks, I've been busy working. However, what I wanted to do in this particular broadcast was essentially have a little bit of what I like to refer to as informal church. Uh, Don't worry, you don't need a Bible, you don't need, you know, anything really. Um, Essentially what informal church is, is a reminder of how not to be an asshole. So, First thing I want to do, I've, I've got three particular things that I want to talk to you about. I want to go over a rant that I had on Twitter, and then I want to tell you guys a little analogy, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how to deal with emptiness in your life. So let's go ahead and get started. This is actually a rant from my Twitter page, which is twitter.com slash the Robin Bull. It's also part of my public timeline for my personal Facebook page. And essentially, I finally decided to address, from my personal perspective, a little bit about what I think is going on with the mass shootings and all of the violence in general. Are we going to keep blaming the NRA, the government, conservatives, liberals, etc., or are we ready to address a systemic cultural problem that is the loss of respect for the value of human life? I know blaming other things and other people is much easier because it means that we can focus on things we don't have to solve because we can't solve it. Instead of looking at what we can do on our own to improve, violence will never totally go away, but it can be reduced. Two of the problems are A, not valuing human life, and B, an entire nation of victims. Look around you. Everyone is upset about something. Instead of talking about it, they go into instant attack mode, and that, of course, does not solve anything. No one will listen to you if you're name-calling, yelling, screaming at them, and no one wants to deal with that. It damn sure doesn't change the mind of the person who has a different perspective. That also creates a pervasive problem with bullying. Because if you're name-calling people, if you're yelling and screaming at them, you're essentially bullying them. And bullying does nothing. And the problem is, we're set up in a system that even though we have these zero-tolerance rules for bullying and, you know, schools that say they're going to stand up for people... The system in general does nothing about it except tell kids to learn to stand up for themselves. And while that's part of the solution, it's not the whole thing. Bullying itself should not be tolerated, and everyone experiences bullying at some point. It could happen to you when you're a child, a teenager, an adult. It, it can happen. Some people deal with it for their whole lives. And then, of course... There's a rampant mental health issue, and that's partially because we watch others deal with mental health problems when we're children, and it affects us. It affects how we function. It affects how we process. Treatment for mental health problems doesn't happen for a variety of reasons, so 
we get these feelings that remain unaddressed. And so we want to blame guns instead of society's failures, plural, failures. I'm the product of drug addicts. I was abused as a child. My parents knew when I was little that the neighbors were molesting me. Like, they literally walked in, saw it happen, happening. They left and shut the door. They let it happen. You know, my parents beat me. I was bullied at school in elementary school and in junior high. And, um... I developed PTSD eventually. I developed complex PTSD because my first marriage had domestic violence in it. But I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not a drug addict. I don't run around abusing others or shooting up the place. And it's not because I had years of counseling or therapy or drugs to treat various mental health conditions. I had specific therapy for PTSD. It didn't last a particularly long amount of time, and I realized I could either be like everybody else who causes these issues, or I could be better than that. You can be better. You do not have to shoot up a school. You do not have to take out your hurt and your rage on others. You do not have to take your own life. You are worthy of having a decent and good life. You can make a mark on this world without violence. You can make a mark by making a positive difference. You can learn from your experiences and help others who don't know how to deal with what they're feeling and going through. And yet, it's so much easier to blame everyone else except take a look at ourselves and how we can contribute to the solution, isn't it? So, unfortunately, Real, but true words. And so now, I want to tell you guys a little story. And I came across this story the, the other day when I was reading a book. And what the story does is it points out the nature of who we are and where we choose to place our focus. And the fact that we do have other people watching us and listening to us. Once upon a time, there was a daddy a mommy, and a little five-year-old daughter. And every day, Daddy would come home from work. Mommy would make dinner and serve it. Daddy would grumble about the food, grumble about his life, and just in general, be an asshole. Yet at dinner, with his wife and his daughter, he would bless the food and say, Dear God, thank you for this wonderful food and for everything else in our lives. One day during dinner, the little girl says, Daddy, does God always hear our prayers of course immediately his inner christian perks up and he, he answers her well yes honey of course he does he hears every prayer no matter how short little girl sits quietly for a minute and then she asked daddy does god hear everything we say and he answered yes honey of course god hears everything we say she looked at him and asked well which do you think he believes so, in your own life, which do you think the divine believes? Your quickly uttered pacifying prayer that you think makes you look good and devoted? Or do you think the divine hears you the rest of the time when you sit around complaining about your life? It's something to think about. And finally, the last point that I wanted to bring up is how to deal with emptiness in your life. Feeling empty inside is nothing new to the human existence. Everyone goes through it at some point. It even happened to motivational speaker Tony Robbins. You don't get a pass on feeling empty. You don't get a pass on feeling like there's nothing in your life. Yes, I know, that may seem depressing. I mean, who really wants to feel like their life is empty or meaningless, right? Yet, while everyone continues to search to fill the void, they're missing out on one important concept. It's not about filling a void. It's about creation. What will an artist do with a blank canvas? What would a music composer do with an empty score page? What would a writer do with a blank piece of paper? What should a developer do with an empty lot? 
The artist creates a work. The music composer creates a score or a song. The writer creates a piece of literature, maybe an article. The developer might create a shopping center, a house, a public park, something like that. When there's an empty space in your life, it's not about filling a void. It's about creation. And when you have emptiness in your life, when you feel like there's nothing in your life, there's potential. You have the potential to create. You have the power, not the ability, the power. And the word there is very important. You have the power to create anything you want out of your life. And I know what some people who are listening to this, or maybe you read this on one of my blogs, you're thinking, or you're saying, but I'm broken. Aren't we all in some way? Every person on this planet has felt at least at one time they didn't measure up in some way. And a lot of the times it's through no fault of their own. Remember the story of Jesus? Even if you're not a Christian, even if you're atheist, doesn't matter. Just consider some basics from the story. He went around teaching people to be good to each other, telling people not to be judgmental twat waffles. Just in general, he tried to be a good dude, right? What happened to him? Not only did he get the shit beat out of them, they elected to free a thief and killed him in place of the thief. The moral of the story? No good deed ever really goes unpunished. So, you're not the first person to be treated like shit for no reason, and you're not going to be the last. People have great capacity to behave like little jerks. Then, of course, we have these unrealistic standards put before us that make us feel like we're broken, and they come at us in every form of media. <coughs> for women, because that's all I can speak for in my own body, some messages like, buy this product, be more amazing, have it all, be Wonder Wife, Super Mom, the Power Executive, and if you can't, well, obviously there's something wrong with you. Can't be the standard society created, no. Be a sex kitten. Oh, you like sex? Well, then obviously you're a whore. And I have sons, and I've watched the mindset that boys tend to pick up because they get these messages from different avenues that conflict. You know, crying is for girls, don't be a girl, be stronger, better, faster, or else you suck. Be nice to get things from women. Oh, Very you're being important. nice because you're just Before a nice guy, you you're obviously a sucker. That you alone and then have they meet power a significant other life. who may appreciate their masculine Think about the town or the city that you live in. Course, empathetic. If you live out in the country, Think I'm about man, the city that's closest to you. If I ask you to show me a picture sent. of a business or a you know, it doesn't really matter who you are. That was once really Those run down. Are out there. And again, people what would you jerks. show me? We all hear. And I live in Oklahoma City, and we have several neighborhoods and commercial districts or being another. renovated. Sometimes those and buildings so and homes are renovated on the inside and the outside. Sometimes the damage is so bad. They drop the building to the foundation because they have to start over. You have the same option. If you just have one or two things in your life that seem to invade your thoughts and hold you back, you can work on those things. Just like renovating a building isn't easy, renovating your life won't be necessarily a cakewalk, but it can be done. The question is, can you handle the hard work or are you a quitter? Will you decide to live your life the way you want or will you allow, allow a society of jerks to determine your place? If you don't like your life at all, you're free to examine every aspect and rebuild from your foundation. You do not have to live up to hurtful or dangerous self-fulfilling prophecies or shit that other people said. I didn't turn out to be a drug addict. I didn't turn out to be a child abuser. I didn't become a perpetual victim. I went down to the very foundation of my life and I rebuilt it. Was it easy? No. Was it worth it? Yes. Your life is ultimately your decision. How you decide to live your life, whether it's peaceful, 
and even what you want to do with it is ultimately up to you. It's your decision. It's your job to build on your life every single day. It's your job to say no to things that aren't good for you, and it's your job to say yes to the things that you want or need in life. It's your job to work hard to get what you want. It's your job to create your life. Don't ever give that power away to anyone else. That's all I really have for you guys today, because as you can hear, I am still quite congested. I've actually stopped recording this extremely short podcast three times for coughing fits. So obviously it's time for more coughing cold medicine. Don't forget to subscribe to confessionsfromthecouch.com. Join the almost 1,700 subscribers. And, um, you know, we have a pretty good time there. We talk about all sorts of good stuff. If you're looking for more information about getting your life under control, rebuilding your life, being happier in life, of course, you're still welcome to go to confessionsfromthecouch.com. You also want to check out americangoddesssociety.com. We have almost 1,500 subscribers there. And uh, check out the blog from there. You'll find some great posts. Don't forget to subscribe here on Podbean or whatever other medium that you're listening through. I know this goes to YouTube and uh, I've been told this can be found on iTunes. I don't know. Never checked. (laughs) So, you can also find me on social media, Twitter and Facebook slash The Robin Bull. Thanks so much for joining. See you next time. Hopefully, you're walking away from this podcast with a plan to implement the tips you've heard a great attitude, and you subscribe to Black Moth Radio to ensure that you never miss any of the goods. Whether you're a hopeful work-from-home freelancer or you're well settled into your work-from-home lifestyle, we hope you've learned something that you can use. If you're ready to more about the work-from-home lifestyle, check out cellfy.com slash Bull. Questions, comments? Let Robin know by going to facebook.com slash the Robin Bull or confessionsfromthecouch.com. Thanks for listening. Join us next time and keep learning.